Hello, people of the world. It's so cold. Are you kidding? It's like 25 Celsius. <laughs> it's windy and cold. I'm so used to it's the after lunch, we're going for a walk through Melbourne and we're going to visit St. Paul's Cathedral, which is one of Melbourne's major architectural landmarks. You're looking at me and I can't help stare Right there, right there I'm coming for you so be patient Did you stay As we walk right around there. Melbourne you see some Christmas decorations are getting set up I've never seen outdoor flowers for Christmas decorations because in Canada Christmas is in winter and we usually have snow this is the first time I've ever had Christmas in summer and hot weather. It's pretty weird. Happy meetings, oh, and a little bit of mistletoe. They're decorating the Christmas tree with a star on top of you. That's where we are going, St. Paul's Cathedral. Make sure to put a like for this video because if you do, you will be amazing. St. Paul's Cathedral is the home church for Anglicans in Melbourne. The cathedral is Victoria's most visited sacred place with over 400,000 visits a year. The cathedral was designed by the English Gothic Revival architect William Butterworth. St. Paul's Cathedral was built in only 11 years. The foundation stone was laid in 1880 and the cathedral opened in January 1891. When the cathedral first opened, there were no spires at all. The spires were built in a new design different from the original. For nearly 40 years without the spires, the cathedral looked completely different. That's why the stone on the spires is a different color. Construction of the spires began in 1926 to a new design by John Barr from Sydney, in a more traditional Gothic Revival style with a different stone from the Sydney area. The new design for the spires was much taller than Butterfield's original design. The spires reached their full height of 312 feet or 95 meters. St. Paul's became the tallest structure in central Melbourne and dominated the city's skyline. Now we're going inside. Whoa. There's a self-guided tour that will take you through the beautiful buildings and highlight some of its treasures. The incredible multicolored stonework is made from Australian sandstone, limestone, and bluestone called basalt. St. Paul's Cathedral has an incredible pipe organ. The organ was built by T.C. Lewis & Co. of Brixton, England and cost over £6,500 for construction and installation. The pipe organ was rebuilt in 1929 by Hill, Norman & Beard when the action was electrified and a new console supplied. Various modifications and maintenance work have been carried out since then with a 726 thousand dollar restoration that was completed in 1990. This is the Chapel of the Ascension and is off to the side and used for private prayer. The tile work on the floor throughout the cathedral is done in many different colors and patterns and it looks great. The music you are listening to right now is recorded from St. Paul's Cathedral pipe organ. How awesome is that? It's like you're right here with me in the cathedral. The stained glass windows on one side of the cathedral show scenes from the life of St. Paul and the windows on the other side show scenes from the life of Jesus. Mom and Dad thought going to see St. Paul's Cathedral was a good thing to do for an afternoon in Melbourne and it's completely free, but you can leave a donation if you want to. It was neat to look inside and I got to ask my mom and dad questions about God and religion. Across the street is Federation Square and has been decorated for Christmas. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow my adventures all over the world. Pick one of these videos to watch next.